what do Russian, Ukrainian, Chinese, Thai, Korean, and heck, even Javanese have in common? I'll give you a hint. It's sitting right next to me. That's right. Sanskrit. Now what you see next to me is actually from my Indic Consonant Compass, which is a tool that I made originally many years back for my Cracking Thai Fundamentals program to map out the Indic Consonant Matrix, which is the base for the Thai script, the Khmer script, and so many other scripts. You can actually see all of these different scripts. I think I've got 12 here, but there are so many more. So this is looking at the Devanagari script. What you just saw then was Brahmi. So they're the real really old shapes. This is the current Devanagari script, which you used to write Hindi, Nepali, and a lot of the time you'll see Sanskrit written in this script. Let me just pull the letters away though, because this will start to make more sense. Now I've spoken about this ad nauseum in my other clips. This is a map of the human mouth. These linguists of 3000 years ago put together. So you've got the back of the throat, ka 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 nga, cha 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 nya, maps the palate, the top of the mouth, da 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 na, Dental, the teeth, da 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 na, pa 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 ma. Um, so you've got these two here, uh, unvoiced. These two are voiced. So k versus g. This is with a stop throat k, and this is nasal. Mm, nya, na, na, mm, all through the nose. Mm. So it's this beautiful matrix, five by five matrix of sound. This is how sounds work within the human body, how the human mouth works. And so they've mapped it out and it works for any language. And so let's just take Chinese. If you've ever learned pinyin for learning Mandarin, the bo pu mo fu, look at this. Bo pu mo fu, all from the lips. De te ne le, this is all from the teeth or this section here or the palate. Ji qi xi, all from this road here. Ge ke he, all from this row here. So all the sounds of Chinese, not just modern Chinese, middle Chinese, Cantonese, all Chinese dialects can actually be linked into this. And then the tone system is, if it were in any of these columns, say they were voiced, there would be one register in the voice. If they were aspirated, another. If they're not aspirated, another. These are the same in Thai. So if I pull Thai here and we see, we know we've got the middle class. They were the ones stopped in the throat. The aspirated ones, which we call high class, and then the low class are all the traditionally voiced sounds which have now lost their voicings. This principle works across all languages and all of the so-called tone rules are just based on what happens in this map. It's not just for tonal languages. Here is Khmer. Now Khmer is the route that a lot of Pali and Sanskrit words have entered into Thai. And even though Khmer doesn't have tones, they do break their consonants into series one and series two. So if I go here, series one, we have what would be in Thai, the middle class and high class. These are these traditionally unvoiced, so aspirated and stopped in the throat. If I have, say, this letter here, this is a ka, that would be ka. If I have the a vowel after it, it would be ka. Now, if I take this equivalent here and put an a vowel after it, that becomes kya. So even though the tone doesn't change in Khmer, because they say Khmer doesn't have tones, the color of the vowel changes because of what happens in the throat. This voicing caused it to change. Yeah. And so understanding sound like this, spelling systems like this, is a super powerful tool in learning how to build up vocabulary, how to pronounce in languages like Thai, Khmer, even Chinese. If you have a look at the Chiyun system in Chinese, just as mentioned, that's all mapped to this Sanskrit map. I really want to do a future series on Chiyun uh, in Chinese because it's fascinating and you see actually just how closely linked it is to all of these other languages and even Sanskrit. But having a look at this and understanding back of the throat, palate, all of this, this brings me to Russian. Now I mentioned in my last clip that I started learning Russian a couple of years ago. And when starting out learning Russian, I heard all of these things of how difficult Russian was to learn and how all of these spelling rules had to be memorized and you had to remember these random letters on what letter can go with what. And I thought, oh heck, but when I finally saw these rules, bang, within a split second, I saw, oh, that's not actually difficult. These are actually just standard principles, especially in Sanskrit or Indic languages, but right across languages like Thai or Khmer, we actually have these same kinds of principles. I'll show you what I mean. So this is the consonant compass. So this is the back of the throat, like I said, ka 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 nga, cha 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 nga. So these are all the k, 
sh kinds of sounds. Now we know in Russian there's a lot of this palatization goes on, and we actually see these principles of palatization happen across Asian languages. So Cantonese kai versus Mandarin ji ge j it just moves down one lot here. Have a look here. We have these same principles. So in Russian, these g k h j ch sh. So does that sound familiar? G k h j ch. And even if you speak Chinese, you would know. Basically, anything coming from these two rows here, you would use this u uh instead of e. Now, this is especially fascinating. Now, let me just write an u uh vowel in Thai. This is u uh versus e. They almost look identical. U uh, e. This is almost a hard version u uh, of this, which is e, the palatized version u uh, from here e. So the rule in Russian. Is if you have any of these top letters here, you just use the e version, not the u. That makes sense. And so all I have to remember, knowing this Indic consonant compass, this matrix of sounds, any letter in Russian that would happen to fall in these two rows, don't use u. Use e. Now that map is actually burned inside of me. I just have it running all the time, and so I know that anything like that's from these two rows. I just know I'm never going to write e. I'm always going to write the u vowel on top of it. Really easy. Let's have a look at this unstressed o versus e. Okay, so the rule is never write an unstressed o after the letters z, z, z. So basically, as soon as I see those letters, I know they've come. From this second row here, which are palatals, these are these palatized letters, and so I'm never going to have an unstressed O. Instead, use ye, and that makes sense because ye ye. We have this ye here. This represents the palate. This is almost like the mascot for the palatals, and so okay, I'm always going to use an e after this. Makes total sense, which would be. This letter or this palatized letter here, which actually falls into the softening versus the hardening rules in Russian. Again, we have tsvoriznak, miakiznak, and so this softener we know would turn other letters into these palatal versions of the letters. So again, this whole idea of palatization, hard sounds, soft sounds from Russian, can be very easily just seen and felt even if you do it in the context of this Indic sound matrix. It's just this. Amazing tool. Let's have a look at this next spelling rule. So, spelling rule number three: ya versus a. So, again, we know ya is the palatal version of a. So, never write ya after the letters go, 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 zh, zh. Okay, it's exactly the same as this. So, basically, the rule for me is: if you've got a palatized version of a vowel, you pretty much don't want to put it over these two rows. Easy. I don't have to go memorizing random letters. I just think of it in the context of this table. And finally, u versus u. Again, this is the palatized version of u. U u. So again, it's basically like adding this palatal to it. So I do not need to write that there because these are already palatized. And so basically, what this y is doing is saying I'm in this row here, guys. And so once again, when I'm thinking about Russian spelling, I don't need to memorize rules. All I need to know of Oh, if I've got a palatized version, I just use the normal vowel because it's already palatal. Because I'm thinking through my Sanskrit matrix that it would come here. Now, looking at Russian, it's not just these spelling rules. You would be blown away how many similarities there are between Russian and Sanskrit. It's eerily similar when you're looking at these. Almost, dare I say, like a dialect. Now, I know it's not a dialect, but as you're seeing it, from the cases to the vocab. All of these different things, you'll see that Sanskrit and Russian are so close. Now think of Thai. Thai has about 65% Sanskrit Pali words in it. Now sometimes there's more, sometimes there's less, depending on how formal the language you use in Thai. So this huge chunk of the Thai language, which can be linked into Sanskrit. Will in turn have links into Russian. That's just crazy. And also languages, of course, like Khmer. You'll see all of these links. Now, once you've learned those, you know that Russian is an Indo-European language. So that means it's like a cousin to Greek and Latin. And so then that means that Thai, through this system here, and we can relate it through to Russian in Indo-European through the links. Now, Thai is a different language family. But through the influence, we just have these words and some of these rules built into us because we see it in the spelling. We can link Thai through to Indo-European, 
through Sanskrit, through to Russian, and then through to Romance languages, through to other Indo-European languages. That is absolutely crazy, but it really works. And we can thank these Indian scholars of 3,000 years ago of putting this together. I mentioned Korean, so, and you can see my glyphs here. If you speak Korean, you'd say, hmm, they look familiar check out my Cracking Tire Fundamentals program, but I actually built these glyphs based on it. Now, if you know the Pugspa script and the history of the Hangul script, which was based on these Pugspa letters, which came from Sanskrit, again, they used these same principles, the Sanskrit map of the human mouth and the actions of sounds within language to develop the Korean script. So here we have the Slavic languages, Russian, all of these rules. We have Chinese, we have the Thai languages, and all of these languages throughout this part of the world who have at one time perhaps used this system, you can start to use this as a base tool in order to jump and get leverage when learning the other languages. So if you are learning Russian, I highly recommend learning at least the fundamentals of this sound matrix because it's really, really useful. Not just Russian, actually, any Slavic language, because once you get into that and Church Slavonic, and I mentioned Inter-Slavic, you'll actually see that the links between these Slavic languages are much closer than even the links you see between many Romance languages today. And those shifts between, say, Polish to Ukrainian or Belarus and then to Russian, you'll see that they actually follow these principles based on the sound matrix. That's why in my Minecraft program, the first week we look at escaping the brain and then understanding the sound matrix and getting into that because you have this engine of the sound matrix running inside of you. You can use it across any languages. And so for me, learning any language, I will always try and see how I can link that into this sound matrix because understanding these principles sets me up to be able to avoid a lot of pain in just brute force memorizing so-called rules or convoluted grammatical patterns. A lot of it can just be explained away when thinking of it in the matrix. A lot of people have been asking me, how can I get my hands on just that tool that I built? Well, I'm currently in the process of building a newer version. I built that a long time ago for my CTF program. So if you go to minecraft.me slash consonant dash compass, um, I've actually put a version of it that is not behind a paywall. Uh, the reason I put the paywall up, I used to have all of this free on J Academy, but then they started charging me for every person that came and used any of the free resources. So I knew this was very popular with people. So I put a free version up so you can just click on that and it will open up a version that's not behind any paywall. You can have a play with it. If you want to learn how to use it though, we'll come and join Minecraft across any language. If you're learning Thai, of course, this takes center stage in my Cracking Thai Fundamentals program. If you order my CTF book from within Thailand, I actually have uh, perforated copies of this that you can tear out and use next to you as you're learning your Thai. The international versions in Amazon don't actually have the tear out. I've got copies of it, but it's not in color. But if you order it in Thailand, you get the color version of that. But you can just click on this link here from minecraft.me slash consonant dash compass and start playing around with this version of it. If you want to learn how to use it, again, go to jacademy.com. I have my cracking Indic based scripts module there in my CTF program or in Minecraft. It's a common thread through almost all of the modules, but it's just so, so powerful. And if you are learning Russian or any of the Slavic languages, I think you're going to be blown away to see how powerful it is in understanding how sound shift palatization, soft, hard sounds, and these spelling rules in Russian. It all just makes sense. I'm Stuart J. Raj. Don't forget to scan the QR code. Come into Discord. I'll see you on the other side. Thank you.